Hi, this is Steve Mitchell. I'm a Christian. I'm a geologist. And today I'd like to take you on a little bit of a tour out of some really neat things in a place called the Valley of Fire. It's a state park in Nevada. Now the fire here is a set of rocks set across that beautiful blue Nevada sky. And my guess is that these rocks are on even hotter on fire in the summertime, but my wife and I visited here on a beautiful day in January of 2020, just before the pandemic hit. So let's take a look at some rocks. We're gonna be looking at some bright red sandstones. These are from the Aztec Formation. They're ancient sand dunes that formed approximately 180 to 190 million years ago during a period known by geologists as the Jurassic period. In fact, you could say that this, in, this state park is a real Jurassic Park. What can you see in the rocks? Think about the shapes a little bit and we'll use our imaginations just a bit. What kind of ferocious monster can you see in these rocks? Perhaps it's a mummy. Perhaps it's a, a charging monster at you. Personally, I see a sock monkey. Maybe not so scary, but still kind of cool, right? So let's go, let's take a look at some other things in some of the rocks that you might see. Some of them just have their gaping mouth that's open and it maybe it's just saying, feed me. How do you feed a rock? Well, let's take a look at some of the other things that we can see in these rocks. For instance, similar to desert dunes of today, the bedding goes back and forth, and when the laminations and beds form in non-parallel fashion, they're referred to as cross beds. And the cross bedding in this case in the Aztec is really pretty cool, at least to a geologist. Now, geologists call the environments where these were deposited in the an Aeolian deposit, or an, Eolo, e, or an Aeolian environment. It means it was shaped by wind. And it creates some pretty strange shapes too. Perhaps you can see phases and odd sculptures in this view. But there's another set of cross bedded dune sands up near the top. So I'm going to zoom in on those a little bit. Here we are. We're up a little bit closer in that way. And you can see where the winds of, in the Jurassic shift the dunes around to and fro. And kind of in the middle there, you see a set of these. Uh, tilted beds in here, which represent kind of the backside of sand dunes that were migrating kind of from left to right. So this would be on the backside. There would have been a slip phrase in, in front of this on the right. So that's kind of neat. Sometimes the rocks are, have, have been named. And this case, this one is not. Now some of the exposures are named. This one is from a set of exposures called the beehives. Now there's no sign of any bee colony today. I guess the family of bees would have moved on through. But you can look at the rocks to the left of the picture and we'll zoom up in on, in on them a little bit. And it's kind of a strange looking hive in this case. The erosion left an odd shape. And I'm gonna zoom in on the lower part of this to show some of the cross bedding in that. Uh, the cross beds in here are not parallel down, but down at the bottom, you have a bunch of those that are going dipping off to the left and they're covered by an odor that's a wedge of sediments that thickens and fans out to the right. And then above that, you have more parallel bedding. That's kind of neat. It looks a little bit like some of those that we might see today. For instance, I thought it might be interesting to throw in a, mo a modern sand dune. This one is from the Sahara or Arabian Desert along the Suez Canal in Egypt. And the modern cross beds are at different angles, but you can just look to the right of this. We're gonna to move to the right of it a little bit and it looks like this. And then we're gonna zoom in on this a little bit closer. And voila, we have a lot of apparently parallel beds that are at least in the direction of this particular face on this. And uh, in many ways, it's similar to what we see in the Aztec formation in the Valley of Fire, but living today in the desert, in the Sahara Desert. Here's another beehive. 
and this has a couple of caves in it and a couple of cave dwellers. One is my wife, Karen, and then I'm standing there with her. We moved in after the bees had left. Now erosion doesn't happen evenly and sometimes it can be the pits. In this case, the pits are kind of a, what we would call differential erosion. From some places, perhaps the cement that held the sand grains together in that place was a little bit weaker and the erosion was a little faster and it kind of gives a creepy appearance to me. A little bit like a face or like a skull. Maybe it could be the uh, other type of faces can be here. In this case, we felt like the rock was a real head here. Again, differential erosion. You can see that the beds near the base eroded a little bit easier than the rocks above that. This is part of the rocks that are called the Seven Sisters. I would have guessed it was a brother though. It took thousands of years to erode the face away from the rock next to it. And if left to nature, the wind will cause this to go away as well. You know, it's a neat area. In around the Seven Sisters, we found a little bit of wildlife or the wild side of life here. And this guy was wondering why people would come out to see the rocks, especially when they don't bring food for him. Some of the rocks, some of the animals are maybe a little bit older. In this case, this is called elephant rock, a really solid pachyderm. And you can see his trunk. You can see it's touching the ground over, over to the left. And as you keep, we'll zoom in a little bit on here. You can guess from a different angle that given enough time, he's going to lose his head that way. It's going to weather away, but it takes a long time for the winds to carve those things apart. Here we have a couple of mammoths. I wouldn't call them elephants, but, but mammoths. You got a mama and her calf this way, if you use your imagination. It could have come from the movie Ice Age, but it is missing some tusks. I guess the tusks have been removed for safety in the park, perhaps. Nearby the uh, elephant rock, you've got some more of these cross beds. And this again, you can see these are coming away. They're, some of the beds are a little bit softer and they weather away a little bit more. And there's a cyclicity to them. You have some hard beds and then some soft beds and then hard beds and soft beds and they go back and forth that way. Now, they probably reflect seasons. You know, where I grew up in Eastern New Mexico, we knew that the spring was gonna bring some strong winds and sandstorms. It happened every year. Maybe these coarser beds in here, the more solid beds on here, were a little bit coarser that way because maybe they came in a period of time where there were stronger winds stronger sandstorms. Okay. There's a lot of different features that you begin to see in the rocks if you look for them that way. In this case, you can kind of see some curve bedding in this. These probably form when an ancient sand dune collapsed or what we would call it slumped. And if you're going through a slump, that's what happens. It's a form of what geologists refer to as soft sediment deformation because the at the time when this was formed, these weren't rocks. These were soft sands. Some of the shapes are, are cool in the area. This is arch rock. No wonder why they call it that. It's not as large or spectacular perhaps as some of those are in Arches National Park in Utah, but it's still pretty cool. And yes, we were there. I guess I'm the mad photographer to prove this. Karen took this, wasn't me. Erosion does some strange things in this area. We've got some caves. In this case, uh, have a very geometric opening to the door to that way. And they also have windows in them. And these are some of the windows that, as you look on in the inside, are looking out from one of the caves there. Some of the rocks are erode out and uh, kind of look like faces. Again, we have a lot of human characteristics in these rocks. I see the face of a boxer. I think he lost his boxing match because that nose has been completely flattened. The area is really pretty cool. You see a lot of great views with the red sandstone, the red coming from iron in the, that's in there, tiny portions of iron. And you can think of this sandstone as being made up of uh, three different layers, 
you see kind of in the foreground a little darker sand and then a little softer finer grain sands in between those and then coarser grain sands again up at the top they all depend on how much mud is in the system how much silt is in the system and little changes that take place here there's also some things some other things to look at not all of the Aztec is sandstone some parts are a little more muddy as I said and occasionally you get some petrified logs in the park like this one though none are vertical as, a, as in growth position they can happen in, in other age equivalent type of rocks that I've talked about online but these would have been things and trees which grew between the dunes in what was probably an ancient oasis a little pool of water, a little pond of water a little bit of things allowed a tree to grow and it was a great spot at that time but the the lakes and the ponds of water didn't last very long probably because in the area, in that inner dune area, they were probably very ephemeral. They held water only in the wet seasons, and as the lake areas evaporated, gypsum was deposited. And that's what these rocks are. They're gypsum. We see the same thing happening in today across the southwest U.S. They happen in the area in what we call Playa Lakes in eastern New Mexico, where I grew up. Here we have a rather large rolling stone. You'll notice that there's no moss on it. It really hasn't moved for quite a long time that way. But uh, even non-rolling stones don't gather moss in the desert like this is. This area is known as the Rainbow Vista. Different amounts of iron and different grain sizes in the rocks give some beautiful variations in the rocks across there. It's all pretty much sandstone but it gives a little bit of a rainbow look to it. Really pretty neat. At times these ancient sand dunes weather out looking almost like modern sand dunes. And you can see, get the scale on this. And geologists like to look at the scale on this because you can see a woman climbing on the dune. You see her? Maybe we'll zoom in a little bit. There she is hiking across the sand dunes. But you don't have to worry about sinking down into these sand dunes. They're pretty solid. Now, I didn't have time to explore and find the ancient dinosaur tracks or arthropod tracks that are reported in the park. I did find some tracks, though. You think these were from the Nike period or possibly the Reebok period? Let's converse about it or converse. Here's some other views, some more rock to look at in this case there's an early attempt at a building and what do they use to build out of sandstone of course look at the mound in the back and we'll zoom up on it a little bit I found it pretty neat you can see there's a lot of parallel beddings on there and then there's these more vertical lines on here these are fractures and the fractures have been filled when minerals moved through the fractures and deposited along them and in this case the minerals weather out in relief because they were a little more resistant to weather than the uh, parallel beds were. Here are some, a case where some of these fractures and beds resulted in what's called a boxwork structure. And much of the original worth, much of the original rock has weathered away and it leaves just a box of harder mineralized areas that way. Setting out in relief what a nice feature. Now here we have three stone figures. They've been petrified here. And uh, I decided that the figure in the center here with the redhead must be Irish on that. Got to be an Irish redhead in here. So maybe they've been coming into, into Nevada for a long time. There's some cool things that you can see. In this. Just the way things weather out in here. A lot of odd weathering. Here's a case where there's, you had a little cozy cave. Maybe real estate agents would hop out the view on the nice porch that's right out the front door. But it's uh, a little cozy inside for most families. Here we have some rocks, which will be described as cuestas. Now, cuesta has a steep scarf with the rocks dipping away from it this way. And it's pretty nice and very very colorful too and kind of mimics the mountains that are in the far ground there.
a lot of neat exposures as you drive through the area. Here we've got the red Aztec sandstone in the foreground and some gray older limestones in the background. We're going to look at it from a little different angle. And I like to imagine that the rocks out in front of this and the, these pitted sandstones, it looks a bit like a dinosaur that's coming out, coming out around the corner here. And here you can see differential erosion created here. The uh, holes were that formed a heart, not a Valentine's Day type of heart, but more like a re the real heart. And what's between these two sides? It kind of looks like a tornado to me. Maybe this is a case where the the heart was so torn up by an ancient storm. Oh well. More pits on the sandstones. Really neat exposures that way. Gives you a strange looking thing that when the weathering tape does that. So again, you have the red Aztec sandstone in the foreground here. And then you have these older gray limestones in the back of it. They're called Paleozoic Olders, much older that way. Definitely there's a geologic fault between these. Without a fault, then those limestones in the background would be buried, would be buried and there probably are age equivalent ones buried much deeper down below these red sandstones. But there's a fault that separates it out. It's not my fault, though. And there's some other creatures that enjoy the uh, the rocks. These in, indeed are desert bighorn sheep that are very fairly common in the park. And they give they're checking out the sandstones here, and they check out the people who come into the area too. I think this one was enjoying watching my wife. You know, Karen enjoys look at wildlife while I look at the rocks. This place is called Atlatl Rock. And I wondered if it would be worth climbing all these stairs or what would be worth, why would you go up and go to that much trouble to get up there? But indeed there is something to see up there. There's a lot of, the prize here is petroglyphs, beautifully preserved. I have to wonder how did they get up I have to wonder, how did the early Native Americans get up there to carve them in, in the first place? Look at some of the, the fi figures that are on here. Wouldn't you like to know the story that went along with some of these things? Atlatl Rock is named for the Atlatl. It's a spear-throwing stick that, that was used in that day, and you can kind of see the guy near the top of it holding one of those. Now, who carved these? The official answer is the basket maker culture that was about 2,500 years ago. Some say that the older carvings here actually go back quite a bit earlier than that. Maybe back to the time of Abraham around 2000 BC. Looking at the top up here where the guy is down below and you have a shaft across this, I thought it was a lightsaber, but I don't think this is, there's any evidence of uh, George Lucas being here at that time. And here's uh, an old bighorn sheep guarding the park. And so that's the end of this story. Hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you'll go ahead and read the part that I talked about from the Red Rock Canyon in near Las Vegas. Thank you.